Hello, this is Geocosmic Valentine, and today I am looking at the astrology chart of Lynn Manuel Miranda. He was born on January 16th, 1980, at 11 a.m. in the morning in New York City, New York. I am going to be showing you things in his chart that fascinate me because I only have 15 minutes to make the video or make any video up until a certain count. Uh, so I'm going to repeat only show you things in his chart that fascinate me. The first thing I'm keeping it simple. The first thing that fascinates me about Lynn's chart is um, an asteroid named Lena. And here it is, asteroid Lena. It is at 10 degrees. Libra, the sign of Libra. And uh, so Lena is an asteroid that is similar to the name Lynn, even though his full name is Lynn Manuel, that's his full whole first name. It's not a first name and a last name. It is a full first name, Lynn Manuel. But we find what we can when we are looking for uh, and we're delineating an astrology chart. So I found an asteroid called Lena, and I'll just, um, I'm going to erase the, the letter A and have it simply be Lynn. And why am I fascinated by that? Well, Lynn's midheaven. We have uh, important points in our charts. Um, everyone sort of knows their, their, their son. He is a Capricorn. His moon is also in Capricorn and his rising sign is 19 degrees Aries. But his midheaven, which is where we find our careers, we find our father or a parent, uh, our parents. And I'll tell you, Lynn, both of Lynn's parents are there because the moon is also the mother. Uh, so uh, we'll get into that later, or maybe we won't because I don't have time to tell you what's fascinating about that. <laughs> anyway, um, so the fact that Lynn's midheaven is 10 degrees Capricorn and Lena, Lynn, is 10 degrees Libra, that is an astrological measurement called a square. And a square is exactly 90 degrees. Both of these objects are, well, Lynn is an object. The midheaven is an energetic spot in the chart. They are exactly 10, excuse me, 90 degrees away from each other, both at 10 degrees of their respective signs. Um, it's, it's something that I've seen and, and learned from other astrologers that can happen when an asteroid of a particular name, and there are hundreds of thousands of asteroids out there that we look at, uh, when, it, when it speaks to, communicates, works with another planet or point in our charts, it can show up in our lives. And so the fact that asteroid Lena is square to his midheaven and the midheaven also being another way that we show ourselves to the world, especially a little bit more in adulthood, um, it, it shows up in our lives and it, and it showed up as his name. So I'm just fascinated by that. Uh, so the next thing that I want to show in his chart that fascinates me, I feel like Lynn is the king of Capricorns, and I'll tell you why. Lynn has so much going on in Capricorn and his 10th house, and I will show you. He is a Capricorn because his son is in Capricorn. The energy of Capricorn is, um, it's very businesslike. It's like the, the business center of the Zodiac. It also, uh, it also suggests um, things like government, politics, uh, 
if it was to sing a song, it would be Rihanna's song, work, 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 work. Let me see if it's, you know, you can find the, the strong business hustler here. You find politicians, presidents. You also find um, religions in a, in a little bit more of an austere sense, ministers, nuns, uh, people who are very, uh, find discipline in Capricorn. And it is the sign, uh, it's a paternal sign, you find fathers. And if I had time, I would go into the entire relationship of Lynn's father, uh, who seems to be joined at the hip with Lynn. That's another fascinating thing. And it makes sense because he's got so much more in Capricorn other than just uh, his son. He has Mercury. Mercury is cerebral, so uh, Capricorn subjects tend to be his, his frame of mind. And uh, we know that he's a writer and Mercury rules uh, correspondence and communication. And, uh, you know, what has what fascinated me, uh, the fact that Capricorn is uh, some of the subjects of uh, Capricorn are government and um, and let's say it's structure, strategy, um, father's paternal energy. Lynn wrote an entire musical about the founding fathers of this country and how they structured the government of the United States. So um, it's not the only musical that he wrote, but so far that's the musical that we remember him for, and that is Hamilton. Lynn also has the moon in Capricorn. The moon is, um, the moon can also uh, suggest our profession, but first it is the mother, it's maternal energy, it's nurturing energy. And uh, with the moon wedged up right next to the midheaven, which is the career point in uh, everyone's chart. It's it's in a very important spot. I don't know a whole lot about Lynn's mother other than that she uh, she is a psychologist, but right now uh, what's fascinating is she is sitting on the national board for Planned Parenthood. The moon is also uh, children. It is also uh, nurturing and because Capricorn is about strategy, planning, all kinds of things of that nature. Um, that is also uh, a part of um, his parental, uh, his parental, his parents. <laughs> I wanted to say his, his development. Uh, so what else can I show you that fascinate? What else was I fascinated about? Oh, um, so when I showed you Lynn, Lynn is his name. And that's what people call him. They call him Lynn, even though his full name is Lynn Manuel Miranda. Um, he is named after a poet named Lynn Manuel. And I just wanted to show you where Lynn is poetic in his life or where it's in his chart. His Venus, his Venus is here. His Venus is at zero degrees, Pisces. Pisces is poetic, artistic, romantic, and that Hollywood sense. It's like the, the, the Vaseline on the lens, so to speak. And it's compassionate understanding. With Venus there, we find a lot of poets with the planet Venus in Pisces. That is also uh, an artistic sign, and Venus is an artistic planet. That is uh, some of where we get music from him. I want to mention something else. The fact that he became so prominent uh, when he, uh, when, when Hamilton uh, was when Hamilton started on Broadway, I just wanted to show some of the prominence in his chart and, uh, and that his father is also a prominent political, uh, political consultant advocate, if you will. Uh, so Lynn has the planet Pluto. When the planet uh, Pluto in Libra at 21 degrees, when the planet Pluto contacts our sun or our moon or almost, 
almost any planet or if it's your ascendant or your midheaven, there tends to be a pressure in your life, uh, sort of like the making of a diamond. Pluto is pressure. Pluto is uh, transformation, a kind of constant uh, transformation, almost like the, the, the death card and the tower card in tarot. So um, I want to mention, I was talking about the square. Pluto squares, it's 90 degrees, it squares his sun and it squares his Mercury. Lynn is very famous right now for his writing. Uh, he even won a Pulitzer Prize for writing Hamilton, uh, and his fame just seemed to continue to expand at, uh, at a really fast rate once Hamilton came out in 2015, uh, and he was in the role, playing the role of Hamilton from 2015 until 2016, and then Hamilton was nominated for 16 Tony Awards, and it won I can't remember how many it won, but it won uh, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Supporting Actress. That's pretty huge. I believe he won the Tony for the book and possibly the music. So, um, so I just wanted to talk about fame in reference to Pluto squaring his son and his ability to write his ability to write uh, something that is uh, a musical that is Pulitzer Prize worthy. Oh, I hope I have more time. Let me see. I have one minute and 46 seconds. Okay, this is another thing that I wanted to show you that is fascinating to me. Uh, maybe I can get two more in. His moon. And this particular asteroid here called Anacreon, it says a anacre, you see it, it's shortened, um, right next to his moon and right next to his midheaven. Anacreon is an asteroid uh, that is named after a poet, but more so a lyricist who wrote drinking songs, mostly a lyricist, some music, Po definitely poetry, but definitely drinking songs. It is hugged right next to Lynn's moon, which is at nine degrees and right next to his midheaven. This is a songwriter, a songwriter's career. And uh, so that's what fascinated me. <laughs> Some of the things that fascinated me about Lin-Manuel Miranda's chart. I also want to mention very quickly, his chart started singing to me not his songs, although one of his songs is a drinking song. Uh, one of the songs, a uh, drinking song that's in Hamilton is called The Story of Tonight. So he definitely gave us a drinking song. And I also want uh, to mention, what else did I want to mention? I'll have to tell you another time because uh, my 15 minutes are up and I just wanted to tell you, if you like a reading from me, you can get in touch with me at my Instagram, which is at Geo Valentine or email me at geocosmicvalentine at yahoo.com. That's all I have time for. This is the end. Thank you for watching my video. Take care.